All right, before you use your cryostat, there are several things you should be aware of. First of all, you should always be wearing these gloves for your safety whenever you work inside of the machine, as there is potential for frostbite if you are not using gloves. Um, we'll just start by introducing some of the things that you're going to use. This is tissue freezing medium. You're going to place this around your tissues or um, in this mold when you're preparing them to go on the block to be cut. After you slice your tissues, you're going to pick them up on these microscope, microscope slides and um, you're going to use them from room temperature. So the, the frozen sample is going to adhere very well. But to increase that, you can also use this kind of glue pen and you just draw on it just as you would a marker and then go ahead and pick up your slide the same way, which we'll show you in a little bit. Also, before you start anything, make sure to consult your manual for the temperature that's right for your specimen. Each tissue has optimal temperature ranges that you want to be aware of. When you're first starting to use your cryostat, you have all these buttons at the top that you can set. Here is the thickness of the cut that's going to be slicing. It can go from very low to very high. Uh, the PE button is what you press when you're going to freeze your samples. And there's a specific area in the bottom that we'll show you in just a minute uh, where it's going to cause the extra freeze to occur. Here's your temperature range. Here's a clock. And you can also turn on a light inside. So moving inside the machine, we have our specimen discs. This is where you're going to place your medium, and it's what's going to be placed inside of your mounting area. Over here is the mounting area, and you simply place the disc inside and screw it to fasten. Here is the stage where the shavings are going to come off. This is an anti-roll cover that you can choose to use or flip over to the side and not use. You have a cover for the blade. You can manipulate the stage to move it sideways using this lever, or forwards and backwards using this. Another way to move the stage forwards and backwards that's especially helpful when you're cutting are these buttons here on the side. The buttons with one arrow are going to move the stage microscopically away or towards the specimen disc, and the two arrows will move it at a greater distance. Your tools uh, should be kept inside of the cryostat area. If you were to take something room temperature and try and manipulate your, your slices, they're going to melt immediately, so be sure as your temperature is equilibrating to the colder temperature that they're placed inside. This blue area here is the area that we talked about with this PE button. It's where it's going to be specifically frozen um, when you press that. There are two basic ways that you can make a sample for cutting on the cryostat. The first way would be using a plastic mold, and you would choose this option if you're using a tissue that needs to be oriented upright so that you can obtain a cross section, such as the intestines. To make this kind of block, simply place media in the center of the mold, grab your tissue using tweezers, and place it in the center of the mold oriented upright. You're going to need to use the tweezers to help it stand upright because the tissue will try to fall over, but especially right before freezing, Make sure the tissue is oriented upright and not falling at an angle to ensure quality slices. The next method of mounting a tissue is done directly on the specimen disc. To begin, you're going to create a base using the media and applying it directly to the specimen disc. You're going to see that it immediately begins freezing and that's okay. All you need to do is make sure that there's a small area in the center of the media that is not frozen where you can place your tissue inside. Once you place your tissue in the center of the disc, making sure that it, it is in media that is not yet frozen, 
you are going to use the heat extraction bar to completely freeze the sample. Simply place the bar over the disc and it will do all the work for you. Leave it alone for a few seconds and it will begin rapidly freezing the sample. When you remove the bar, you'll notice that the tissue has been slightly flattened. This method is not good for tubular tissues or tissues that you need to orient specifically or for delicate tissues. It is really ideal for large organs like the kidney or liver where you're just looking for a cut of the tissue and do not need the sample upright. You will recognize that the upright tissue block that we made in the mold needs further processing before we're able to mount it in the mounting area. You're going to force the small frozen block out of the frozen mold by applying pressure with your hands to the base of the mold so that it falls onto the floor of the cryostat area. Then, create a base of media on the specimen disc as we did with the second method. Again, notice the media immediately begins to freeze on contact, but just make sure there is an area in the center where the media is not frozen so that your block will adhere when you place it on top. Use tweezers to pick up the block, being mindful of which side you want facing up and which side you want into the back of the block. Apply slight pressure with the tweezers to make sure the block adheres to the base. Take the bottle of media and apply additional media around the base of the block to ensure that it will stay on while you are sectioning. If it does happen to come off, or if the entire structure comes off of the specimen disc while you're cutting, Simply create a new base and refreeze the sample onto the specimen disc. When you're ready to begin making slices of your tissue, take your specimen disc and place it in the mounting area. Secure it using the screw on the upper left hand corner. You're going to first need to figure out how far away you are in relation to the blade with the tissue sample. Remember those buttons on the side can be used to move your tissue samples forwards or backwards. Make sure that you aren't too far over the blade, or when you bring down the wheel, you can chop off your entire block. Also, remember that you may or may not initially see tissue in your slices. They could initially be slices of only media if your tissue is situated deeper into the block. You can always manipulate the thickness of the slice to get deeper into the block where your tissue is located, but don't forget to change it back to a thinner slice so that your slides will stay on during the staining process. When you begin slicing, you may notice that your samples are trying to roll, and this will prevent you from getting a nice section to put on a slide. One way that you can practically fix this is by using the brush to apply gentle pressure to the bottom of the slice as it is coming off the block, and while you are slowly turning the wheel. Once you have a slice that you're happy with, move it to a lower area of the stage so that it's not accidentally knocked off. You can gather several slices to be picked up at once with one slide. Another way to prevent rolling of your slices is to use the anti-roll shield. This is a little tricky to get set up at first, but once you have it at the right distance, it is super helpful in preventing rolling in your slices. Continue to manipulate the distance of the shield to the block using the small spring at the base of the shield until slices come out correctly smoothed. As you're making slides, you're going to see that some are of better quality than others. Additionally, you may have poor quality slices physically attached to high quality slices to separate them, simply use your brush and your tweezers. Ultimately, you're going to need to move selected slices to the center of the stage where you can pick them up with the slide. It is possible to pick them up at many places on the stage, but you may have to be creative with how you position the slide. To pick up a slice, bring the slide in at an angle and gently let it lower onto the stage with light pressure. When you have finished working on the cryostat for the day, you're going to need to get rid of the excess shavings that have gathered at the bottom of the cryostat. You will notice there is a basin specifically for this purpose. Use the brush to collect a pile of shavings, then pick up the entire pile using either a paper towel or a Kim wipe. Do not remove the basin from the cryostat while it is in freezing mode 
as it will condensate as the basin adapts to room temperature and then it will freeze to the cryostat when placed back inside. If you are going to use any solutions to clean the blade or mounting area, as directed by your professor, make sure they are only ethanol-based solutions and never water-based.